Hello, welcome to our lesson on unit rates with ratios of fractions. It sounds really complicated. We'll make it make a lot more sense here in just a minute. What ugly wallpaper. So what to expect today? We're going to look a little bit at complex fractions, a sample problem, and then a little bit of practice. Our first question, if I eat three quarters of an apple for every two thirds of an apple my sister eats, that is the information we're given. It's a ratio or a comparison of two different values, a ratio in this case or comparison of three quarters to two thirds. If we wrote that ratio in fraction form, it would look like this. This is called a complex fraction or a stacked fraction, or a fraction on top of a fraction, or a four-layered fraction. I don't think anyone's ever actually called it that. But anyway, you get the point that it's this really complicated looking fraction. From this fraction, if for a strange reason you ever wanted to find the unit rate of apples we eat comparative to each other, we would basically solve this fraction, or do 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. To do that, we multiply by the reciprocal, or we would multiply 3 quarters times 3 over 2. Flip over that um, fraction on the denominator there. And we would get this basic ratio, or our unit rate at the end, that I eat 1 and 1 eighth of an apple in the time it takes my sister to eat 1 apple. That would be the unit rate. Yummy, yummy. Now we're going to move into a sample problem that takes that idea of the unit rate to the most ridiculous level ever. Let's look. My grandmother hired me to put up wallpaper in her house on a 12 and 10 twelfths by 8 foot wall. Now this fraction I used, 12 and 10 twelfths, actually would be a fraction of 12 feet and 10 inches. Anyway, moving forward, if each piece of wallpaper is 6 and 2 thirds square feet and each one costs $10, how much will it cost to make her house more ugly? That's a great question. Now there's a lot of steps involved when you get a question like this. First of all, you would need to calculate the square footage of the wall the amount of square footage that you are covering. Secondly, you would find the number of pieces of wallpaper it would take to cover that, and then in the end you would calculate the cost. So we're going to break down each of these steps as we move through this problem. Step number one, the square footage of the wall. The square footage of that wall, 12 and 10 twelfths by eight feet, we would calculate using our area equation by multiplying the length and width of the wall. 12 and 10 twelfths times 8 is equal to 102 and 2 thirds. That is our square footage of the wall. Then we move on to step number 2, which is finding the number of pieces of wallpaper that you would need. You would do that by taking the area, you have our square footage here, 102 and 2 thirds, and dividing that by the square footage that's covered by your wallpaper. In other words, how many groups of 6 and 2 thirds are there inside of 102 and 2 thirds? So you're breaking this down. Now, if I were to actually do this stacked, um, division question here. The easiest way I find to do it is to make them into improper fractions and then multiply by the reciprocal or in other words take my new my fraction in the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. So I flip over that denominator 20 over 3 becomes 3 over 20 and now I multiply straight across um, 308 times 3 and 3 times 20 and then I simplify it back into a mixed number. So this is the most math step, finding the number of pieces of wallpaper that it would take to actually cover this wall. 
Now we move on to step number three, where we actually have to calculate the cost. Remember, there's 15 and 2 fifths sheets of wallpaper. That's what we calculated in step two. However, you can't buy 2 fifths of a sheet of wallpaper, so you would have to buy 16 full sheets and then have a nice piece left over. That makes our math actually a little bit easier because we can simply multiply 16 times 10 and find out that it costs $160. So there's a lot going on in this question. We used those stacked fractions. We found the cost. We found, or sorry, first we found out the square footage. Then we found out how many pieces it would take and then calculated the cost. Oh my goodness, yuck, Uh, oh, what's going on, the, my, oh. Now let's get into a little bit of practice for you. If two and a half pounds of chocolate cost $15.25, how much is one pound of chocolate? This is a more simplified version of a question that's actually a lot like that previous one. First we would set it up as a ratio, two and a half to 15.25 or $15.25. The challenge or not the challenge but the the step of this that I would say we have to do at this point. Writing a ratio of, of a mixed number to a decimal is sort of silly. So we're going to make a choice at this point. We're either going to go all fractions or we're going to go all decimals. Both are absolutely fine, and I'll solve it in both ways, but if you're ever given that type of a situation, what I would encourage you to do is to pick one or the other. So we'll start off up top here doing our fraction version. Um, you see here 61 over 4. That's converting 15 and 1 fourth into an improper fraction. And instead of dividing, we will multiply by the reciprocal. So I would convert this into an improper fraction of 5 over 2. And then I have to flip that upside down to multiply by the reciprocal. So I kind of did two steps in one here. Multiply straight across and simplify back into a mixed number. But that version actually isn't nearly as helpful since what we're asking in the end is how much does one pound cost? So we can't, don't normally say something costs six and one-tenths of a dollar. So the decimal version is actually a little bit better in this case. We would simply do some division, 15.25 divided by 2.5, and that will give us our final answer of $6.10. That's what the cost is per pound, or in other words, you thought you got away from it, but you didn't the unit rate. Couple things to take away. One, organize what you're trying to find. Remember the rules for dividing, multiplying, and working with fractions. And two, the unit rate will always come to find you. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.